Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for May 4th, 2020. For all of you um, Star Wars fans out there, may the 4th be with you. <laughs> um, this morning, we are looking at kind of an interesting setup this morning. The bears certainly are stirring about. And last week we had a pretty significant sell-off heading into the close. So what does that mean for this morning? Well, how about we take a look at the technical, settle in, and let's get ready for the morning market prep video for Monday. So this morning, just a kind of a nasty little pullback going on. At least it's better than it was last night. Last night we were looking at 300 plus points um, to the downside. This morning we're looking at a little bit better situation. We take a look at our trend here in the chart. It all depends on how you choose to draw this trend. But if we choose to draw this trend, kind of something like this, we kind of ignore this outlier here run that trend up along here and I really should have drawn that just a little bit tighter. If you take a look, uh, Friday selling kind of broke that trend. But the good news is, is that right below this we have our 50 day moving average and we have a significant level of price support right in here on the chart. Now, if we take a look at the morning, right now bid ask spread is suggesting that we're gonna gap down and we're gonna be right down here in this area. And what's going on this morning is just the uncertainty that we have about reopening the economy. I think everyone's beginning to realize that the reopening is going to be very, very difficult. It's gonna be extremely challenging for businesses to reopen. Think about it, if we have to maintain social distancing num um, th numbers and things like that, reopening a lot of these businesses will be extremely challenged. And what are the um, liabilities that these businesses will face as they begin to reopen? Will they even be able to re afford to reopen if they don't have enough business coming in to support um, their overhead costs. So lots of questions circulating out there, lots of uncertainty, and that's giving those bears a little bit of um, additional activity. So the question as to whether we're going to follow through has been answered. Now the big question is whether or not we can hold on to some of these levels of support. As you can see this morning, the Dow will be challenging hard it's 50 day moving average this morning. Now, as long as it can hold in there, we'll be in good, really good shape. I suspect we could fail that 50 day, um, even at the open, and we're going to have to rely on this level of price support. Well, to, to really inspire the bulls to fight. Um, if, if they can't hold on into this area, we could have some real challenges ahead. Just keep in mind, if we were to fall through here, the next level of price support is down in here. That's still a significant drop in price of the Dow, and that could have a lot of effect on other indexes if the Dow really starts to suffer here. So let's watch that closely. Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed and hope we find some support in these areas right here and catch a little bit of a bounce off of that area. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY is in a better situation, technically speaking, because we have a little bit more space to our 50-day moving average. And notice that our 50-day moving averages are still falling. They're still in decline. We haven't had a chance to recover. Our shorter-term averages have recovered, and that can provide a bit of a le level of support right in here. And as you can see, we have that nice little level right in here where all those averages and everything kind of come together. We're we're trying to find that area of support. Once again, right here is our uptrend. And so far, the SPY held up in its uptrend. It is in better shape than the diamonds uh, is. And we're going to gap down into this area this morning. So we have a pretty substantial level right, right in here of support. Let's hope those bulls identify that and decide to defend and hold on to that area. Because if we were to slip back below that, and I know no one really wants to think that that could occur, but if 
it were to occur, it's a fairly significant slide down into this next level of support. So let's just stay um, focused on the price action. Try not to predict where the market's going to go and just stay focused on that price action and um, try to determine how we want to navigate um, the day ahead. Let's take a look at the cues. Now the cues, by far the strongest of the indexes. The pullback this morning, although rather substantial it's not going to break down anything technically and as you can see dropping just a little bit here this morning here in the nasdaq we're still going to be well above this uh, key support area and our 50-day moving average is now crossing down through the 200 not a good sign typically they call that the death cross 50 crossing down through the 200 but with the volatility that we've seen here in the market it may not mean much of anything we need that 50-day moving average to start turning up and our best hope here um, is the NASDAQ for that to start turning up if we continue to slip let's watch these levels of support down in here and keep in mind that we are still holding on to trend here in the nasdaq so we're in pretty good shape here when it comes to the tech sector let's take a look at iwm now iwm not so much iwm gave up its 50-day moving average here at the close on friday and we're going to gap down below trend and this key level of support and, and that level of support translates right back here where we had recovered the 2018 low now we're pushing back down below that this morning we'll have to wait and see how iwm responds but right now iwm is really serving um, uh, we're kind of dragging it around with the other indexes and the cues is trying to do the heavy lifting of lifting every market right now can it continue to do that i don't know so what are the things that are going to maybe affect that today well first let's take a look at the vix the vix had a pretty good rally here at, at the end of the week but it wasn't so substantial that um, should really scare us all that much we did break down below this level of price support and we broke back above let me zoom zoom back here a little bit and you can see that price support um, showing right here in these charts and so we we broke back above that but we remained below our 50-day moving average which is a good sign and we remain below even those shorter term like the 34 ema and the 20. so that is a good sign popping back up is a little bit of concern and i suspect that we will pop up a little bit higher this morning um, with the sell-off this morning but we'll want to watch that carefully we don't want to see the fear really start to spike back up so if we can stay below this um, little area right in here and I think it's it's setting up right through this range if we can stay below that range we're probably going to be in pretty good shape and continue to see that fear diminish although we may set up more of a choppy zone in here around fear at least we may prevent that from spiking up substantially let's take a look at t21 22 t21 22 is the four week new high new low ratio you can see friday we got a big pullback here dropping below this 50 percent area here on t21 22 which is a good sign we dropped down through here um, just exactly what we need to see and a gap lower this morning could bring us back down into this um, area down in here. So let's watch um, down here. We could be reaching that short-term oversold condition and be expecting that bounce back up. It's really going to depend on how we respond to all of the earnings data and economic data that's coming our way this week. So let's take a look at that our earnings calendar this morning 
we have um, we have a big earnings calendar. So let's start off with our economic calendar. Our economic calendar got a couple things on it, but nothing of major concern. We've got motor vehicle sales and we have factory orders. Both of those do have the potential to move the market around, but probably not nearly as substantial as the things later this week. Um, international trade, jobless claims, and the Mac Daddy this week is going to be the employment situation number, which is a a week later than normal and I don't think anyone is expecting that to be a good number and it could cause some significant stress for the market as we move toward that number and seeing those very grim numbers that it's likely to report so um, on our earnings front we have about 250 companies reporting earnings today and in a week where we have about 1500 companies reporting so we can expect an awful lot of volatility now as I as I talk earnings are coming out and right now Dow futures have improved just a little bit we're down 222 points at the moment in Dow futures but let's take a look at some of those companies that could be uh, moving things around here this morning oh oh um, a real estate uh, company will be reporting today let's keep an eye on that AIG AIG will be reporting today AWR reporting today Lo looks like it might be trying to indicate just a tiny little bit higher in the utility um, CAR CAR reporting this morning and looks like they are gapping just a little bit lower here at the open. Uh, DLB, DLB will be reporting huge wide bid ass spread. This is crazy. TC2000 is really cool and the way it shows me the morning open, the morning bid ask, and you can see that market makers have spread that out um, ridiculously waiting for a report it looks like how about Hertz Hertz HTZ reporting this morning now they um, announced that they were declaring bankruptcy um, it'll be interesting to see what happens here but it looks like Hertz right now indicated to open about where it closed on Friday Lowe's is reporting um, today and looks like it's indicating a little bit lower here this morning um, in NN reporting this morning it's kind of a wide bid ass spread as well um, OHI OHI will be reporting and it is also looking to gap just a little bit lower here this morning pets pets is reporting this morning can't see that the report has come out on that with a wide bid ass spread we've got shake shack that's on the docket for today and looks like it's gapping just a tiny little bit lower tyson tyson is gapping lower this morning and there's major concern right now about uh, meat products and uh, we've got tyson and smithfield and other meat packing facilities that are struggling because of the coronavirus um, understand that there are some areas of the country where they're actually rationing um, meat uh, out um, there's a limit on what you can buy because i guess there's been a bit of a run um, trying to stock up in case uh, prices begin to spike on that uh, WMB WMB is also reporting this morning and WH so few companies of note and that's only going to grow substantially as we go through the week they're going to be a huge number uh, coming in right now uh, and these numbers will change but on the earnings calendar I show nearly 400 tomorrow almost 500 on Wednesday and over 750 on Thursday 150 on Friday so they're really slamming those in here really fast expect quite a little bit of volatility in price action as a result Dow futures are back down now below 250 points so um, there's that volatility where we popped up we were nearing 200 points down and now we're 259 260 points lower showing us that volatility first thing here this morning so with that what can we look for where can we find some security safety and some of these 
uh, markets. Well, I got to tell you, with the gap down this morning, it's going to be one of those where we're going to have to wait and see where we find some of those safety plays. But there could be some things going on in stocks like uh, Newmont Mining. Newmont Mining had a really nice rally on Friday, um, pushing back up, trying to hold some support levels in here. And you can see gold or the gold miner moving up here this morning. Um, Gold, Barry Gold had a beautiful bullish engulfing candle on Friday holding this price support. And as you can see, it's gapping up this morning right into my price alert. I would maybe keep an eye on that. As fear starts to pick up, we may be looking at some of these safety plays. Take a look at AG. AG had a nice little resting pullback here, pulled back into price support, and then on Friday perked back up. Nice little piercing touch type candle here and it looks like silver is trying to move a little bit higher here this morning we could go straight to slv slv um, has been consolidating here um, could start to perk up and gld itself is showing strength this morning as we perk up another place for safety um, that a person might look um, would be in bonds. TLT getting a little bit of a lift here on Friday, maybe indicating just slightly higher this morning. Stock-wise, there's a lot of places we can look. Stocks like CGC, um, cannabis stocks. Interesting pullback that we had here um, in that stock and now this morning it's indicated higher so we may look to some of those cannabis stocks uh, to try and hold some of these trends and reverse and pop back up take a look at CGC keep in mind guys that all a lot of companies are going to be reporting earnings so you're going to want to pay attention to when those earnings report um, TLRY is another cannabis stock holding its price support and if that picks up off of there there could be um, an opportunity uh, Crone Crone um, really sold off ugly last week uh, trying to indicate a little bit higher this morning but I think I'd probably stay away from Crone for a little bit in that opportunity it could rally back into this resistance area and fail and it's going to report on 5.8 so kind of keep that in mind the, the reports only a few days away um, other places that you might look um, stocks that have been holding up relatively well are the casinos um, Caesars Palace here trying to hold up we've run nicely in this little trend right in here run up nicely we're pulling back into that trend look for an opportunity maybe for that to perk up in there um, stock like sq sq has held up pretty darn well a um, little bit of selling in there on friday and gave me a little concern maybe breaking that trend but if that can move right back up off of this significant level of support, it's still worth watching to see if there's that opportunity there um, in those charts. Other places are going to be oil. Now, oil had a bad day on Friday, pulling back pretty hard, but sometimes that sets up great opportunities. So if we take a look at uh, Cabot Oil, Cabot Oil pulled back, pushed back up the, the bears, uh, weren't able to hold on to that. Um, and so we're still in this consolidating range here. And this morning it's indicated to open, oh, right about where it closed. So we're in this consolidating range, still chopping sideways. We wanna watch this because the overall trend right now is up and we wanna watch for that opportunity that that could perk on higher. We saw some big moves in like Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil sold off strongly on Friday, but um, overall we're trying to hold um, in these price levels of support. So if we can hold above these areas in here and get those buyers stepping back in, maybe okay, but it is indicated lower this morning. So keep an eye on that. Oil may be a place where we can go for a little bit of security, but we're gonna have to watch pretty closely. Um, so many stocks are moving around so dramatically it's hard to know what comes next in these plays another place that has been holding up really really well is these gaming companies um, electronic arts holding up quite well even as the market sold off if it can hold this level of support we might want to look for that opportunity here 
for that to perk back up. TTWO, take two, um, also had a really nice perk back up here on Friday, trying to hold the level of support. Now, I would say this guy is pretty darn volatile in its candles, uh, the way it's moving around. Can be a little bit more dangerous here, but watch this as this tries to push back up toward those resistance level. Take two interactive might be a place to look. So there's a few stocks out there that we should be paying attention to. Nike was one I was kind of watching last week, but it just really couldn't get its mojo together to get moving so if it can hold this level of support right through here there may be that opportunity that this perks back up we'll just have to wait and see it's going to be kind of a tough um, road ahead knowing what comes next as we face the virus as we face this reopening um, it's going to be, well, a lot of challenges ahead here for the market. Last stock I'm going to mention here is OKTA. OKTA, very nice consolidation here, holding above a significant level of support. What's notable in here for me is that there really doesn't seem to be a big willingness to sell in here everyone seems to be holding on and if i kind of consider this candle a bit of an outlier and run a trend up here we're getting really really close in that trend where we could see those buyers step up so watch that carefully on okta with that everyone hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day and i want to wish you a great week in the market i do expect a really challenging price action market with so many earnings reports and then that big employment number on friday is going to weigh heavily on um, investors uh, minds so Watch this carefully. Try to set your bias aside and really focus on the price action of the trades. That's the way we can make money in the market is just setting that bias aside and really focusing in on that price action. Everyone take care. I wish you all the best. Hopefully this, this morning's note found you all healthy and rested for the week. And we'll see you right back here bright and early, bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a good one. Everyone.